Operation Ajax, also known as Operation Tapjax and Operation Boot was a secret operation carried out by the British Secret Intelligence Service and the US Central Intelligence Agency that secured power for Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi of Iran when Iran's popular nationalist government was dominated by Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh. Mossadegh was born in Tehran and was educated in law at Lausanne University, and he held several posts in Iranian government ministries in the 1920s. He retired in 1925 but returned to politics in 1944. Mossadegh was a devoted nationalist who directed his attacks at the Anglo-Iranian oil company, which he believed had exploited the Iranian economy for 50 years. When Mossadegh became Prime Minister of Iran, he nationalized the oil industry, a monopoly largely owned by British Petroleum, and prepared a plan to compensate the previous owners with funds from the profits of the oil sales. Both the conservative and non-conservative governments in Great Britain wanted BP, one of seven oil companies that controlled the world's oil industry, to maintain its monopoly and feared that the loss would cripple British prestige in the Middle East at a time when Arab nationalism ran high. The British took their case to the United Nations and the International Court of Justice but lost. Russia hailed Mossadegh's success and urged the Iranian two-day party to support him. The British Foreign Secretary, the Minister of Defense, and the BP Chairman proposed military intervention. British Prime Minister Clement Attlee would not agree, instead, an embargo was put on Iranian oil, and Iranian funds in British banks were frozen. At first the United States wanted little to do with the problem in Iran, experiencing problems itself at the time with oil industry cartels. President Dwight D. Eisenhower supported Mossadegh's attempt to make his country independent politically and economically in 1953. In time the British embargo crippled the Iranian economy, and the Americans feared that the Soviets would seek further influence in Iran. The CIA, with support from the British CIS, planned to support the Shah and undermine Mossadegh's weakening control of the Iranian government. On August 8, 1953, Eisenhower gave the CIA permission to bring about the downfall of Mossadegh. With help from the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, non-partisans were brought to the city and encouraged to riot by liberally distributing $100,000 in cash among them. The Shah's loyal general, Fazlallah Zahidi, arrived to manage the coup, arrested Mossadegh, and had him jailed. The most important U.S. actors in the coup were Alan Dulles, CIA head, Kermit Roosevelt, chief of the CIA Plans Directorate's Near East and Africa Division, the American ambassador in Tehran, and the former chief of the New Jersey State Police, H. Norman Schwarzkopf Sr., a CIA military specialist attached to the American embassy who from 1942 to 1948 served the internal security needs of the Shah. Under Kermit Roosevelt's direction, the CIA arranged for Iran's newspapers to publish pro-Shah and anti-Mossadegh articles, print troop stories that had been fabricated, with cartoons and interviews that had never taken place, bribe members of the Iranian militia, spread false rumors about Mossadegh's government, produce fake documentation of secret agreements between the Iranian two-day party and Mossadegh, find individuals who pretended to be communists and behaved accordingly, mislead Iranian religious officials into believing that their lives were in in danger and their homes were to be torched, incite rioters to burn down newspaper offices that supported Mossadegh, and bribe the army chief to take over from Mossadegh. After his arrest, Mossadegh was condemned by the Shah for supporting communism, committing treason, and pursuing a doctrine of negative equilibrium for Iran's economy. Mossadegh was jailed for three years and in 1956 was placed under house arrest until his death in 1967.